Hi, my name is Beth Wenzel, and I have some exciting news and important information to share about the Esterbrook Falls Fish Passage Project. In case you aren't able to watch this entire video, I'll hit the key points up front. So we are just starting construction of this project. It will consist mostly of removing rock from the falls to create paths for fish to swim past it. We will be doing all of the work within the river this summer. Uh, MMSD is leading the project with funding and technical support from the Department of Natural Resources. Our engineering and design consultant is Interfluve and our construction contractor is Michaels. And the purpose of the project is to allow native migratory fish to swim upstream and downstream to reach important areas where they can reproduce, find food and grow. This project is part of a larger effort to rehabilitate the Milwaukee estuary, which has been identified as an area of concern. There is a lot of information about areas of concern and other activities going on in the Milwaukee River on the Waterway Restoration Partnership website, and that address is shown on your screen. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about uh, the general area of concern work, uh, so I can really focus on the work we're doing at Esterbrook Falls. The purpose of the work we're doing at Esterbrook Falls is to open the river to fish migration. For thousands of years, fish from Lake Michigan moved freely up into the Milwaukee River to reproduce and find food. When Europeans settled in the region, they dramatically changed the character of the river, including by building dams along it. And that ended those seasonal fish migrations. But fortunately, we realized that was a mistake. And for decades now, many of our partners have been working to remove these barriers to fish movement. In some cases, entire dams have been removed, and in other cases, uh, we've built small channels uh, around dams, like what we did at Clutch Park a couple of years ago. And I'll show some photos of that in just a minute. So now the biggest barrier to fish migration is at Esterbrook Falls. So fish coming uh, from the lake up into the river, most of them get stopped um, right here, just within a few miles of, of the lake. Um, but when we finish the project, a lot more fish will be able to access all of these green areas all the way up uh, into the river, including some very important um, tributaries that have really good habitat. This is the fish passage channel that we finished building around Clutch Park Dam uh, just uh, last year, and it's now owned and maintained by Milwaukee County Parks. In this case, we left the dam alone. It's right over here, and we installed a small stream channel around the dam. We also installed some fish monitoring equipment at the upstream and downstream end so that we can um, detect fish that are moving through it. There's a couple of reasons why we can't do something quite like this at Esterbrook Falls. Uh, first of all, the bank on the park side of the falls is much too high, so a channel around the falls on that side would require a whole lot of earth moving. And on the west side, the land is all privately owned. Secondly, a bypass channel like this requires periodic maintenance, and there isn't anybody to take on that long-term maintenance at Esterbrook. So as you'll see in a minute, we're doing something very different at Esterbrook. So let's talk about Esterbrook. Some people are surprised to learn that Esterbrook Falls is not a natural waterfall. Uh, instead, it was created when people mined bedrock from the river to make cement back in the late 1800s and early 1900s. So they basically mined, you know, all the way up to the falls. And then where you see the falls today is just where they stopped mining. Esterbrook Falls is what we refer to as a partial barrier because it doesn't stop all fish from getting through and during various flow conditions a lot of different fish can get through. So for example if you uh, go out to the falls during a salmon migration you'll often see uh, salmon successfully jumping over the falls and continuing on upstream. And then at very high flows, uh, even some of the, the native fish can, can get through. So, for example, uh, that photo on the right side is from April of 2024, and the flow rate was around 4,000 cubic feet per second, and there was no visible waterfall that day. Um, and there were a couple of times in 2024 when the water got up this high, and we know that Lake Sturgeon were able to get through here because they were detected at Clutch. 
This year, though, we did not have those really high flows, and we did not detect any lake sturgeon up at Clutch. And if you were to go down to the area, um, you know, during the migratory seasons this spring, you would have seen a lot of fish that were stuck down at the downstream end. I mentioned that there isn't public space available to make a bypass channel around the falls, so our plan is to re remove enough rock from the falls that fish can swim through it. So we will make a deeper cut on the west side of the river and then just partially lower the east side of the river and then leave uh, this rock a little bit higher in the middle. We're also planning to leave a smaller drop on the east side and that will maintain a waterfall that will be visible uh, during kind of more normal to low flows. Construction is always a little annoying, uh, so I want to take a little time to uh, warn you about what to expect while we're doing this work. So uh, trucks will be entering the area from the west, so they'll be coming in along um, this route that's outlined in red, and they'll be doing some clearing down close to the river here on the west side, and so um, we will be closing the trail that runs through um, along the river on the west side. Uh, certainly during weekdays, we're hoping to open up that trail um, for most of the time on the weekends. Uh, paddlers will not be allowed through the construction zone, so if you choose to paddle this reach, you will need to uh, get out of the river on the east side, so on the park side, um, and you know haul your boat down along the river um, to get back in uh, further downstream of the construction area. Uh, the good news is there won't be any work on the east side, so the only impact to Esterbrook Park will be uh, some noise, um, but uh, it also will be a, a fine place to, to watch the work that's going on. The contractor will be drying out one side of the river at a time to remove the bedrock from the falls area, so they'll be using some large kind of sandbag type things filled with sand and gravel run them along the river uh, to basically force all the water on one side of the river at a time while they dry one area out to do the work. And then you'll see some heavy equipment in the river uh, chipping away at the rock and some trucks hauling that material out. And then when they finish on the east side of the river, uh, they'll move their operations. So they'll move those sandbags over to um, dry out the west side of the river while all the water flows on this side. We are anticipating that all of the tree and brush clearing on the west side of the river will be done uh, relatively soon, um, in kind of early to mid-July. And then the rock removal in the river uh, should be completed by sometime in September. Um, then from September to October, they'll be constructing a, a new portage route that extends a little further upstream on the west side and replanting the disturbed areas. And then we'll have three years of vegetation maintenance um, in all of the areas that we've disturbed. If you have any questions about the project, you're free to contact me at the email address shown here. Brennan Dow is the point of contact at the Department of Natural Resources for this project. There's also a form on uh, our website where you can leave any questions or comments and those will get directed to me to respond to. Finally, I want to note that this project is funded by the United States Environmental Protection Agency through its Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. With that, I thank you for your interest in this project and hope to be able to share good news about successful fish migration soon. Have a great day.